So welcome to calculus. It's going to be divided into three parts, which the first part is going to be the first principle and the rules. Then the second part is going to be the cubic function, which is going to be part two. Then the last part, which is part three, is going to be application, right? So what we're going to do is that below, I'm going to leave a link to all possible questions that you can get for the first principle rules and also tangent, right? I'm just going to add tangents there. And the solutions to those questions when you're done doing it is going to be inside the course and the course is only 190 rank, right? But it's a lot of questions. Just know that I cover almost all questions so that you can know different type of questions that they can ask you because I truly believe the fact that the first principle and rules and also the tangents for me falls under the easy section as long as you know a while a wild variety of the questions, right? So part one, which is 8.1, it says determine the derivative of f of x is equals to 3x squared using the first principle, right? So if we're using the first principle, this is the formula that we need to use. So let me just change my pen. So this is going to be 8.1, right? So we know the fact that using the first principle is going to be the first derivative by using the first principle, meaning you're going to use this one, which is the limit when h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by y divided by h. So how I do it is that I break down the numerator and simplify it and substitute it back when I'm done simplifying it, right? So the first thing that I'm going to find is f of x. So we know the fact that f of x is given as 3 minus x squared then the second thing that you will find is going to be x plus h right so whenever we see x now we're going to substitute by x plus h so this is going to be the same as x minus this is going to be x plus h all squared right so we're going to expand that so when we expand that it's going to be 3 minus open bracket is going to be x squared plus 2 x h right so then this is going to be plus h squared right distribute the negative so it's going to be equals to 3 minus x squared minus minus 2xh minus h squared, right? So that's that. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to take the numerator, which is going to be f of x plus h minus f of x, right? So we're going to do that. We know the fact that f of x, uh, f of x plus h is equals to this one. So it's going to be 3 minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared right and this is going to be minus open bracket you're going to be f of x which is going to be 3 minus x squared right so now we're going to distribute the negative so it's going to be x minus x squared minus 2xh minus what minus h squared and this is going to be minus 3 then it's going to be plus x squared right so you see the fact that this and this are going to cancel out and this and this are going to cancel out, right? So you're going to be left at what? We're going to be left with negative 2xh minus h squared, right? So here, take out the h as a common factor because you need to cancel it with the h here, right? So let's do that. So when you say h, then you're going to be left with 2x and this is going to be minus h, right? So now we're going to write the formula again. So it's going to be f prime of x is equals to what? To the limit right when h approaches zero so now we're going to substitute f of x plus h minus f of x by this so it's going to be h that's going to be able to get negative 2 x minus h and this is going to be divided by what by h the h's are going to cancel out so you're going to be left with the limit when h approaches zero of negative 2 x minus h since everything we don't have a denominator anymore we can substitute h as being zero so this is going to be the same as negative two then this is going to be x then this is going to be zero right so therefore our answer is going to be negative two x so this is going to be your answer for this question so now we're going to do the second question right which is going to be 8.2.1 right which we need to determine this this is the same as finding the derivative so we're going to say dx Right, and this is going to be 2 divided by x, and this is going to be minus square root of x, right? So here we're dealing with the fraction and we're dealing with a root, right? 
So we need to change the fraction into being what? We need to change this to being in the numerator. So how do we do that? We're going to say dx. Then we're going to say take the number on top. This is the same as to the power 1. So this is going to be 2 to the power negative 1, right? And here we're going to change it into an exponent. So it's going to be x to the power 1 over 2, right? And we are done. So now, since everything is in the right order, right? Now we can write use, right? We can use the rules of differentiation, right? So using the rules of differentiation, we're going to take the exponent and multiply it here. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by negative 1. Then it's going to be x. Then you're going to say negative 1 minus 1. Right? And here's going to be what? It's going to be minus 1 multiplied by what? By 1 over 2. Then it's going to be x. It's going to be 1 over 2 minus 1. Simplify this. This is going to be the same as negative 2. Right? And this is going to be x to the power negative 2. Then this is going to be minus 1 over 2. Then this is going to be what? x to the power what? To the power negative 1 over 2. And this will be your answer for this question. So now we're going to move to 8.2.2. It says find dy over dx, and they give us the fact that our y is equals to x to the power 3 minus y, right? So we have the fact that y is equals to x to the power 3 minus 1 all squared, right? So if you see it like this, what you need to do is that you need to expand this, right? So we need to expand it. So the first thing that we need to do is expand it, right? So to expand it, we're going to have the following. So we're going to expand it. So we're going to have the following. So basically, I'm going to say y is equals to two brackets, right, minus 1, and it's going to be x minus 1, right? So let's expand it. So y is going to be equals to, when you say x to the power 3 multiplied by x to the power 3, this is going to be the same as x to the power 6, right? Then when you say x to the power 3 multiplied by negative 1 is going to be minus x to the power 3. When you say x and negative 1 multiplied by x to the power 3 is going to be minus x to the power 3. Then when you say negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 is going to give you a positive 1, right? Therefore, y is going to be equal to x to the power 6, right? And this is going to be minus 2x to the power 3 plus 1, right? Since it's like this, now you can differentiate. And when you differentiate, you're going to show it by saying dy over dx, right? And this is going to be equals to take the 6 in front, so it's going to be 6. Then this is going to be 6 minus 1. Then this is going to be minus 2. Then it's going to be multiplied by 3. Then it's going to be x to the power 3 minus 1. And this one is a constant, so it's going to be 0. So dy over dx is going to be equals to what? It's equals to 6 to the power 5, right? Minus what? Minus 6 to the power Two, and this will be your final answer for this question. So now we're going to move to what? Uh, we're going to move to 8.3.2. It says y is equal to 15x plus p is a tangent of the graph a, right? So we know the fact that the tangent line, right, lies on the graph a, right? Then they say that they could calculate the x coordinate of the point of content. So let me just sketch the situation, right? So that you can understand. Yeah, let me just sketch it in red. Is that since it's positive, meaning the fact that it's something like this, and this is also positive, meaning it goes. I'm just gonna put a random, a random line anyway. This maybe let's say the fact that this is gonna be a tangent line, right? This is f of x, and this is what this is the tangent line, which is gonna be y is equals to fifteen x plus plus p, right? And this is the point of contact, right? Which is going to be x, and I'm going to call it t, and y, t. So what are they looking for? They're looking for this way. Hope that makes sense, right? So now we need to basically understand the relationship between um, this formula and also f of x, right? So we know the fact that we're given that y is equals to 15x plus p, right? What is this? This is the gradient, right? This is the gradient of the graph. How do you find the gradient of the graph? The gradient of the graph is equals to f prime at x t, which is what we want, right? At x t, which is the actual coordinate that we want. But we know the fact that since this is going to be equals to f prime of x t, that's going to be equals to 15 because of that's equals to the gradient. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to find the first derivative of this 
then equate it to 15. So let's do that. So we're going to find the first derivative, which is going to be equals to 3x, right? Squared minus 12, right? So that's that. After that, we're going to substitute this by x, what you call this, by at xt, right? So it's going to be xt. So wherever we see x, is going to be xt. Right? Minus 12. Then we know the fact that f of xt is equals to 15, right? So this is going to be 15 is equals to 3x of xt minus 12. Take the 12 to the other side, right? So when we take the 12 to the other side, you're going to have what? You're going to have 15 plus 12 is equals to 3xt squared, right? So when you add 15 and 12, you're going to get what? You're going to get 27. So this is going to be 27 is equals to 3xt all squared, right? Divide everything by 3 because you want t alone, xt alone, the x coordinate. So this is going to be 27 divided by 3 is equals to xt squared, right? So this is going to give you 9 is equals to xt squared, right? Squared with both sides. So since it's even, so it's going to be plus or minus, that's going to be 9 is equals to square root of xt squared. So this is going to be plus or minus 3 is equals to what? Is equals to xt, right? So therefore, that's your answer. Your xt is basically equals to plus or minus 3. And that will be your final answer. I hope that makes sense.